everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Buckaroo Designs. I've got a really fun treat box for you. It is a slider box that holds a Twinkie. Um, I am using an online exclusive product called Rhino Ready. I love images that I can color with my Stampin' Blends. So this one jumped out at me right away, but also it's just really super cute. These little rhinoceroses are adorable. All right, I'm gonna show you how to make this box. There's lots of steps here and we'll go through each one of them together. Um, first, I want to let you know that inside my box is a strawberry Twinkie. Twinkies now come in all different flavors. They are all the same size, so even if you just use a regular Twinkie, it'll still fit in your box. All right, we're gonna make our box first. Grab my Simply Scored. First, you're gonna need a piece of pale papaya that is nine and three fourths by seven inches. On the long side, we're gonna score it at one and a fourth, two and a half, seven and a fourth, and eight and a half. Now, all of these measurements are on a free PDF over on my blog, so if I went through that real fast, just go over and get that free PDF. Short side, we're gonna score at one and a half. Oh, I'm sorry, one and a fourth, two and a half, four and a half, and five and three fourths. Now that's the box part, the, the tray that the Twinkie sits in. We're gonna need the little tunnel or the little drawer maybe. Well, I don't know what you call it. The little tunnel that the box goes in. Um, that's this piece, four and seven eighths by seven and a fourth, also pale papaya. And we're just gonna score the long side at two and an eighth, three and three eighths, five and a half, and six and three fourths. All right, so let's put together this one first. This box is going to have sides that fold down into the box so that you have a rounded edge. Um, I feel like you have to, when you're pulling a box like this, you need to strengthen those sides. So as you can see, it's got that rounded edge and the ends are um, thick and tough, so they're not going to rip. The first thing I always do is get my bone folder out and burnish those lines. We want them nice and crisp. We've got eight score lines. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out the three squares on each side, okay? And we're gonna cut this score line right here. So when I cut out those three squares, I'm also just gonna take my scissors and cut all the way in like that. And then I'll cut off that square, those two squares, and that square. Now the other thing you wanna do, you've got this flap left, you wanna take your scissors and just cut off that top edge right there, okay? All right, let's do this side. Same thing, cutting off those two squares and cutting off this one square and cutting up, cutting off that outside top corner. All right, now I'm just gonna quickly do the other sides exactly the same, cutting off the three outside squares, cutting off that top corner, one more. Okay, and then like that. All right, so here's what your piece looks like. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is just slightly cut off the corners of all the outside tabs. That's gonna help your box go together a little bit better. Um, in case you're, you cut on the inside or the outside of the score line, sometimes a piece of paper or a, a tab is a little bit too tall or too long, and this way, we won't have that problem. Okay, now, if you wanna pause the video so you can see exactly what your piece needs to look like, there you go. All right, now for adhesive, you can use whatever you prefer. I'm gonna use uh, liquid glue, 
And I've got some clothes pins here I like to use to hold my box together. The first thing that you wanna do is put your adhesive on the outside of all four of those square tabs. And then you're gonna fold up the sides and press into those tabs. Okay. And now we're gonna take the inside of the remaining sides and just put our adhesive, whoa, we got a little crazy there. Fold in, and put your adhesive on those, all four, and then fold them in. And I like to take my clothespins and just, it'll hold everything in place while it's drying. It'll, that way you don't have to stand here and hold your box, hoping for it to quickly dry. All right, so there we go, there's your box. Let's see if I can wipe up that glue so we don't get it on anything that we don't want it on. All right, I'm gonna set that over there to dry. And now let's do the little tunnel part of our box opening. I'm gonna, again, let me get my bone folder, score all those lines. This one is much easier. And I'm gonna take tear and tape this time on this one and put that right there on that skinny tab. Take my paper snips and pull that off like that. All right, and then we're gonna fold it and adhere it behind that back end so that you have that tunnel for your box to slide into. All right, on your basic white, you're gonna stamp your little rhinoceros in memento black. And we're gonna stamp the little blower also in memento black. We're gonna stamp the sentiment in Calypso Coral. Right up here, let's see, right about there. I'm gonna leave enough room. I'm leaving, I am using the Conversation Bubbles um, dies to cut that out, so we wanna leave enough room. We're gonna stamp our Saharan grasses. We're gonna do these three times in crumb cake on craft paper. All right, now to color our little rhinoceros and our blower, I'm using um, Smoky Slate and Calypso Coral. All right, I'm gonna start with my light. Oh, that feels like that's the dark. Okay, let's start with the light. And I'm gonna just go and give my rhinoceros a full coat of light smoky slate. And I like to use the bullet end of my marker, but we have a brush tip as well. Um, so choose which one you feel most comfortable with. Also, I know some people like to start with the dark and add the shadows first, but I like to do it this way. And there's really no right or wrong way, whichever way you feel like works best for you. The best part of our Stampin' Blends is that they blend together and you're not gonna have any streaky, streaky line, marker lines like you would with a regular marker. All right, now I am gonna take my dark. I'm gonna go down the side of her face like this and I'm gonna add a little bit of a shadow underneath her mouth and we'll have some shadowing down here between those two legs and kind of across the bottom like that. And then you wanna take your light stamp and blend back and blend that out into the light part. All right, she's got a little bit of a shadow line here on her face. I'm gonna take the brush tip and just kind of feather that out. Okay, now I'm gonna take my dark and just do around her horn 
I realized the first couple of times I colored this that I colored the horn gray and I'm pretty sure it's supposed to stay white. So <laughs> decide how you want yours. Let's see, the reason why my markers were mixed up is because my lids were mixed up. So let's fix that. And now let's color the little blower. I'm gonna use light Calypso Coral. And then I'm gonna take the dark and color that in like that. All right, let's bring our cut and emboss machine over. This die set has a lot of dies and I've actually cut out some already. I've cut out the um, green leaves. I also, I cut those from Mossy Meadow cardstock. I cut out um, let's see, what else did I cut out? The party hat. And I'm looking for, here we go. And we're gonna cut out these three things as well as those grasses. Now, I told you I was gonna use the conversation bubble right there to cut that out. That's a different die set. I'll have that listed on the supply list on that PDF for you. All right, so we've got those two little pieces. And our little speech bubble. Now, let's cut out our grasses. We're also, while we're here, we're gonna cut out some of these, um, these bottom pieces, these like, um, I don't know, hills, if you will, little mounds of dirt. And we'll cut out our grasses as well. Okay, let's create our little sunset circle. I have um, a basic white stitched um, stylus shape circle and I'm gonna use my little uh, blending brushes and I'm gonna add some Daffodil Delight here on the bottom. And I'm gonna take another one and grab some Mango Melody. And I'm gonna go from the top down to kind of blend in with the yellow, the Daffodil Delight. And then I'm gonna get a little bit of Calypso and add that right along the top, Calypso Coral. Okay, add a little more Daffodil Delight. I found that you wanna bring your yellow up higher than you probably normally would because most of this circle is gonna be covered up. Let's look at the sample. Covered up by all of this. So you wanna be able to see that. So make sure you bring in that, that daffodil um, delight up high enough. All right, there we go. Now the other thing I wanted to do is add a little bit of crumb cake to our hills or our mounds of dirt, whatever they are. So I'm gonna take another blending brush and crumb cake and do the same thing. Whoops, flew across the desk. All right, there we go. Okay, last but not least, the very last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna stamp our sentiment again because I don't know if you noticed, but I stamped it and embossed it on Calypso Coral as well to add some contrast. We're just gonna emboss that word wild in um, basic white embossing powder and then cut it out and put it on our white conversation bubble. So I'm gonna add some white, there we go. And I'm gonna hit it with a heat tool for just a second until it turns shiny. All right, there we go. Now bring back over your, there went my embossing spoon down the back side of the table. Bring over your conversation bubble and cut out with your scissors just the word wild, like that. 
and grab a mini dimensional. Put that right there, up a little bit higher. There we go. Okay, I think we are finally ready. We have all of our pieces. Let's bring back over our box. Put our Twinkie inside. Add it into our little drawer like that. I have a piece. Let me bring all these pieces over here. I have a piece of our beautiful desert designer series paper that I'm going to put on the front. This is a great kind of a Saharan desert scheme, desert color scheme in this paper. It's great. I have two other um, Rhino Ready projects and one of them features another pattern of this paper as well. All right, we've got some dimensionals. So let's get our circle like that. Now we'll take our grasses. We're gonna go from the back to the front. And I'm gonna put one over here. Put one over here. And we'll put one right there in the middle. I feel like this one might need to go over just a bit. Like that. And then we'll get our dirt, <laughs> our hills, piles of dirt. And we will put those, we'll put one there. And let's put another one right there. Let's bring in our adorable little rhinoceros, our rhino, and put him right there. Now we've got the little blower. And one thing I found is that I, if you cut off just this little white edge right here, it makes it really look like it's in his mouth like that. Um, let's see, did I use a dimensional? I did. You're gonna need a mini dimensional for this for sure, cause it's pretty small. Put that right there. All right, now for our sentiment. Do you wanna put this down towards the bottom corner? There you go. And now let's add in these really fun Montero, Monstero, I can never remember what these leaves are called. My kids like these leaves. They, two of them have a necklace with this leaf on it. And my daughter's always trying to tell me what it's called. Monstero, Montero. I know neither of those are right. Somebody will tell me. All right, let's stick that there. And this one can go about like that. We'll take these guys and balance things out over here. Like that, so cute. Now I've cut out, remember I cut out that Calypso coral party hat. Take your dark Calypso coral and color the little puff and add a little dot to each of those polka dots just to give it some contrast. And we'll put that right there between his ears. Your Take your pick tool is great for these small pieces. All right, how cute. Last but not least, we're gonna add a bow because I just like to add bows to everything, you guys. This is our window pane ribbon. And I'm going to just tie a bow, cut off those ends, whoops, nice and neat. And you can add that with a mini glue dot. And there you go, a fun little treat. Looks like I need to bring that down just a little bit. Let's bring that down so we cover up the bottom of that sun. And there you have it, a really fun little treat box. Um, for somebody's birthday. 
All right, I hope you enjoyed this project. Make sure you click the link here on YouTube to go visit my blog and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks everybody, bye-bye.